Good evening. This is the November meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. The first item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Are there any from uh, members of the board? Administration. Peter, under the business manager's report, under, there should be a 3A and a 3B. 3A will be to ratify the uh, negotiated uh, 1990-91 rates for Blue Cross Blue Shield for teachers, bus drivers, and custodians. Okay. Uh, 3B, I believe last month when the board met that there was not a formal motion or vote on the uh, cafeteria food service workers uh, contract. We would need a vote tonight. Okay. So. Any adjustments uh, from the public? Okay. The uh, the first item on the uh, on the agenda after adjustments is approval of the uh, minutes of the two board meetings held in October. Any observations or comments on those minutes? Why don't we all look at Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> Under the school board meeting of October 9th, um, number six, school board ratification of food services contract as it has been put onto the agenda under the business manager's report, they need to be approved. Right, yeah. But the, the minutes will stand as they are because, or, or are you suggesting a correction? I, I think they're accurate. Okay, Other, the fact that they weren't. They were signed, but they weren't ratified. They were signed, but not ratified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that. That there, is, there doesn't need to be a note to reflect that they were never ratified. Connie, do you want to put a note in that uh, the one looking at these minutes should look at the minutes of tonight's meeting? If that's usual and customary, let's do it. Any other comments? Okay, could I have a motion that those minutes be approved? So moved. Seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, D, the business manager's report. Thank you, Peter. Uh, last month was a quarterly report. However, I was not present. And I would, if you have any questions on pages 22, I believe the report starts with the revenues. I'd just like to highlight a few things. Today, we've received 35% of our revenues or uh, $3,087,000 out of a possible $8,886,000. The following page kind of summarizes the expenditures to date as of October 30th. Uh, we have expended to date 29% of the budget, or $2.6 million. 29% uh, of the expenditures come out of the uh, elementary, K-5, with 30% of the expenditures uh, in the middle school. At the high school, we have expended 28% of the budget and 32% of the undistributed accounts for a total or an average of 29%. How does that compare with last year at this time? Last year at this time, we had expended uh, approximately 28% of the budget. And we uh, are, you're still confident that we're well within the budget? Well, back on September 26, I had some preliminary numbers that I, that I ran looking at all the accounts in the uh, general program. And at that point, with making, uh, looking at the revenues, the projected revenues for June 30th, along with projected expenditures for June 30th, with encumbering the uh, teacher payroll for, for next summer for the four payrolls, I had preliminary numbers of, uh, preliminary balance of 48,000 some odd dollars. Last Friday, we just completed uh, loading a, uh, a, a software uh, package into a, uh, a Macintosh computer a spreadsheet. Uh, all employees and all benefits have been incorporated into the software. What I'm doing today is, is kind of printing all the, the data that the computer has given us and verifying you know, the, the, the numbers. If if all the entries were done correctly in that. 
hopefully by let's say a week or two I'll get a memo out to, to the board and to the superintendent as to where I project the, or if any difference in that $48,000 should occur. Uh, the, as you people are aware of, this, this program that, that uh, has been done kind of incorporates for 80% uh, of all our expenditures in the budget. We have voted the other 20%, but what we've done is like grouped all the supplies together, grouped all the contracted services together, grouped uh, all the, uh, the uh, plant and buildings together. Uh, what else? Uh, teacher in services as far as uh, improvement of instruction. So there's like five other numbers that go along with all the salaries. Uh, those have come out to be, you know, proved uh, out to be correctly. The big picture is in salaries and benefits. Mm -hmm. So hopefully within a week or two, I'll have a memo out to you people as to what the numbers look like. Good. Any questions? As far as the following page, uh, yes, Charlie. Um, last year we had quite an overrun in substitute teacher account. How is that? Looking a lot better, a lot better. Uh, a lot of the, I think what, what probably helped that along, Charlie, is that this summer through the, uh, through the summer curriculum work and all that, I think a lot of that work was done, plus uh, the half days as far as uh, Wednesdays and stuff. But those accounts are looking a lot better. The following page on page 24 uh, summarizes the revenues and expenditures for the federal and state programs as far as uh, grants. To date, we have uh, anticipated grants of $183,000. We have received revenues of $99,000 with expenditures of twenty, or a balance of $78,987. I believe you're going to have uh, American, African, American studies highlighted tonight as far as one of those grants. The following page summarizes the food service program to date through October 31st. Uh, September had a loss of $6,900. October we had a, a gain or a profit of $812.97 along with accounts receivables of $4,400. To date, the program is, well, 44, that's 52, about $900 in the red. Looking at, I brought some preliminary, uh, some matchups from last year. Last year we had, to date, a loss of $815, so we're pretty much on line with what we were last year. However, I think November last year we had a loss of eleven dollars or $12,000. Uh, we don't predict this right now. Looking at inventories, as far as uh, end of the month inventories, uh, this year we've got $13,000 in inventories compared to 12.9 last year, so we're pretty much on budget there. As far as unpaid bills at the end of the month, this is like food and supplies that we've used but not paid to date. Last year we had $23,000 of unpaid bills at the end of October. This year we have $9,421, so that's a big variance. You know, after we get the, the Excel program loaded for oh, the... Oh, that's uh, another one, sure. Th this uh, should be changed so that you can do it yeah. on an accrual basis sure. and uh, you don't have to make all the uh, uh -huh. comments and verbal adjustments that you just did. Sure. The $5,000 that's an yeah. equipment grant, has, yeah. has, what is that for? Uh, the state last year, uh, we bought... Oh, we had a, a mixer at the Pond Cove School that went on the bottom of the year. So through the process, we bought a mixer that was worth like 6700 bucks. We paid the, for the mixer out of general funds in support of the school lunch program. When the state, and report to the state, we had done so. Then they put us in a pool where we would qualify to receive money for equipment. We did uh, purchase a, a freezer, a refrigerator, and a stove for the middle school. And that's been purchased? At a, yes, at a cost of seventy-seven or $7,800. Yeah, I saw that. In, yeah. that, was, that was last month's, right? That's correct. That equipment yeah. from last month. So this is money that we've taken in that will not go out. Then. I mean, it's already been paid. The bills have been paid. That's correct. So out of that 7700 the state uh, gave us the max of the grant of $5,000. Yes, Charlie. 
Where is the $25,000 that was budgeted, reflected in this? It's still in the, uh, if you go to the general program, it's still under, if you go to page, uh, boy, I can't read, 23, under food services, way down under the undistributed, there's $25,000 that's been budgeted, expended as zero. So why isn't it reflected in this? Well, this what, what I'm trying to do, I think what we'd like to do is, is run the food service program as it is, then at the end of the year, we'll j it's just a, a fund transfer. Well, I think it's more than a fund transfer, and I think I agree with where Charlie's going, is that these are hard figures to read and understand. You know, when I see a deficit, and I know we've already budgeted 25000 hmm. Okay, it so I'll do the transfer. No problem. I'll add a line to... Uh, to uh, revenues up there. Transfer from general fund. No problem. Yeah. Uh, I think we're doing a few things that are different in school lunch this year. We're, we're bidding on a weekly basis for all food and non-food items instead of just buying them. So, you know, we're getting three, four prices and buying, you know, the, the best product for the best price. And hopefully that uh, will work out in the long run. How does the number of meals that we're serving in comparison to last year? Okay, example, uh, October 1990, total, total lunches served to children was 8,995. Uh, the year before, 9,654. We're down a little. But we're saving we're down. No, well, we're down. We're saving money, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, just lately, I heard we're down a little at the pond called the, the elementary school. And as a, uh, we've uh, made adjustments to hours there also. S people are leaving like 15 minutes or later, uh, earlier every day. Did, did we increase the price of the salad bar? At the middle school? Yes, we did. We did not include the, part, the salad bar as part of the hot lunch. We made it separate for 25 cents. <coughs> I think it's a combination. The high school revenues are, are up surprisingly with the same number of, of kids eating, but they've made alterations as far as the menus, as far as prices. We're up like $100 a day, which is good. Uh, the next report is community services. To date, uh, they have received uh, $236,000 and have expended $180,000. As you will note, this is a new format for them. This is like uh, by uh, programs and not... Uh, last year was just uh, different uh, revenue accounts, but the expenditures were not necessarily related to the programs. I wonder if Sue has a Macintosh. Yeah. Is that what you're doing that on? Excel? She's got a 30 that I'd like to have here. It's You're doing okay with the one you it's have. It's quicker. <laughs> the following pages uh, highlights the uh, enrollments for November 1st. Uh, District-wide, we're, we're down five students. Did any, did we ask last month for a check on how many students were enrolled um, from elsewhere, employees, children, or was that something we September asked? September we asked. Daryl was to get back to us, and yeah. I don't think he did. I don't remember getting that. Yeah, it's I, I remember seeing we something. We just did a November 1st enrollment report that we could provide you, and that, that would highlight that. Uh, the next item of business I have is uh, we need a, uh, a motion to ratify the teachers and the bus drivers, custodial, custodial staff negotiated benefits for health insurances for the 1990-91 school year as per attached. Yes, I was pleased to serve with Peter on that negotiating group and uh, we were uh, able to negotiate uh, increases that fit, strangely enough, right within the budget that we had targeted for this year, which is uh, a nice thing to do in the year of 
tight dollars, and uh, I'd like to be the first person to make the motion that we accept that contract adjustment. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any uh, questions, discussion? Are we ratifying both of them at the same time? Yes. Uh, yeah. All in favor? Next but item that I have, Peter, is uh, I guess we need a, a motion to to ratify the uh, food service workers contract beginning September 1st, 1990 through August 30th, 1991. So moved. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? It's a vote. Thank you. That brings us up to date with... <coughs> All of the uh, the contracts. Okay, good. Mr. Chairman, I have a question to ask the or superintendent. The recommendations that came out of the auditor's report, how many of those have been implemented? Uh, I recall, like the the, uh, the petty cash is now being handled by a different person other than the accounts per payable person. Uh, the checks. Oh yeah, we have installed or have had a, a lock put on that uh, the computer room door for the checks to be locked at night. The school personnel policy, policy has anything been done? I think that's going to have to be an ongoing situation. I have been looking at the um, policy book to see what you have in fact in place and uh, had some preliminary discussions. Um, about that we have had a meeting for instance regarding liability updating our insurance understanding we had that meeting with the town manager and town department heads um, so that will be an ongoing issue and the other one would be the school fringe benefit plans have all those affected employees been given revised w-2s uh, we have uh, we have a list of I believe it's like 26 <coughs> or 28 employees that have been affected by that I met last week with the auditors. They have provided us with a a, a package that that goes back to three years with the, the, the you know the uh, revised uh, two C's and the uh, 941C and of the nature. Uh, I would think or hope that Jerry by next week would start filling these out. I uh, one of the auditors is supposed to come to my office. With, <coughs> and talk to the, to the superintendent as far as drafting a letter to go out to these people and kind of forewarning them as to what they will receive in the next two to three weeks. Okay, that was my next question. Have yeah. those people been informed? No. Oh. Somebody is supposed to come in and help us draft the letter. Thank you. Any further uh, questions on the business manager's report? I have one announcement which uh, perhaps fits under that category, and that's uh, from Kathy Poole, the director of our community uh, uh, television uh, channel. We need camera people to film the school board meetings. It's a paid position, and anybody who's interested could call the town hall. The number to call is 799-0881. So if you're interested in that, uh, please uh, contact Kathy or call the town hall at that number. The uh, next item on the agenda is a report from the middle school representatives. The high school representatives are not here this evening. So middle school representatives, do I see Rachel out there? Who else do I see? Jeffrey. Jeffrey. <laughs> well, it's not Rachel. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Starbeck. I was here last time. And this is John Quirley. He's new. Okay, um, first we'd like to mention that um, the walkway between the computer lab and the library wing and the 7th and 8th grade end has been finished, and many students use it, like, a lot. And it helps because it cuts down walking time between the two areas. And our dance on October 19th was a success. And we are planning our next dance for December 14th. We hope it will be as much of a success as the first one. Um, the student council is now looking into the idea of acquiring a multi-purpose scoreboard. It would be placed in the back wall of the school and would be used for girls and boys soccer and boys baseball. Um, the student council is also discussing the idea of running the 
candy cane program again this year. Um, last week, the student council ran a drive to collect items for two soldiers stationed in, the, in Saudi Arabia. The two soldiers are Chuck Sanborn and Duncan Milne. They are both Cape Elizabeth High School graduates. Our drive was a complete success. We were collecting items ranging from books to toothpaste. Um, while collecting, we were able to fill two large boxes with items. These boxes are in the process of being shipped to the Middle East. And our yearbook committee has finally obtained enough orders to purchase a yearbook this year. We are hoping to add superlatives to our yearbook. And um, the first quarter of the, um, the year ended on Friday, on the 3rd of November. And the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders students received their report cards. And um, for the students of this the students of the middle school this upcoming Thursday is a half day, and on Friday this week <coughs> there is no school. During this time, the teachers of the middle school will be holding conferences with parents. And tomorrow night from 6 o'clock to 7 p.m., the, the, sixth graders, the sixth graders displaying their projects from their space unit. All are invited to attend. Also tomorrow night from 7 to 9 p.m., the 6th, 7th, and 8th grader grade life skill program is having a meeting. All middle school students are welcome to come. And last of all, the, the boys cross country team ended the season by winning the championship. Their final record was 28-0 under Coach Dillon. Thank you. The interim superintendent's uh, report, Connie. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the students from the middle school for your report. I know the high school students will be making theirs next month. And I also would like to ask you to look at your schedules and find a time when I could come visit you. Uh, I would enjoy hearing what you have to say, and I think this might be a good time of year before we get real busy with budget issues. Uh, so if you will, talk to your advisors and find a time and let me know. Thank you. Uh, which leads me to my first item is uh, I uh, mentioned last month uh, that I was trying to talk to both individuals in the system and um, groups uh, and have tried to uh, find time to meet with whoever wanted to sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one or small group and at this point I have probably 30 individual and in group, actually it's more than that, but anyway, at least 30. Um, notes on separate interviews and so on and I'm in the process now of trying to write this up to report. Uh, it does take a little while and it also takes some discipline, that is one can't write it all up and it, uh, I think it will be useful to try to highlight some of the issues that people are identifying as ones that they feel are um, in a, a variety of categories, things that the system will need to look at. Some of them of course are strengths, there are many, many excellent things going on and I think this is an opportunity to highlight some of them. Um, I would apologize for the impossible task of highlighting everything that is good, but at least we'll try to make some uh, positive statements. And obviously there are some issues that will have to be sorted out, particularly for uh, the budget process. Uh, and I will make some comments about those too. I have enjoyed the process. I feel that it, uh, people have been extremely gracious in giving me time and uh, I hope to um, have that report, at least in draft form, out to members of the school com school board. I keep calling you a school committee, but school board. And the uh, anybody that I have talked to, I will uh, send a draft and will ask you to give me any um, feedback, whether I, you'd like me to edit it. And ultimately, there'll be uh, a paper available to whoever is interested. And any more comments on that, or I'll move along. I did, in fact, include in the board packet, and if anybody here, I think the administrators and um, perhaps some other people, um, some articles that I thought might be of background interest uh, for that, and they're not something that need to be commented on here, but if anybody has any comments, uh, I'll give you quite a little reading to do, I would be happy to hear from you on that, too. Moving on. My next item is an update on the roofs. Um, and we had a meeting in October uh, that was, uh, I don't believe it was on cable, although it was covered and an item appeared about it in the courier. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't really think it's necessary at this point for me to repeat everything that was discussed at that time. But in summary, we have been moving ahead on the uh, structural 
um, piece that we talked about at that time, both at the connector roof at the middle school and a small project at the boiler room at the end of the middle school, the seventh and eighth grade wing. The bid package uh, is, uh, has been prepared. Uh, I believe it has left the architect's uh, or engineer's office. Uh, we expect to uh, be opening bids by the 29th of this month. And uh, in uh, my preliminary conversation with the um, engineers, they are expecting that Christmas vacation, which I think we talked about during our October meeting, is very likely to be the time when that work will be done. I won't be able to confirm that until, of course, we have a chance to talk to the contractors and see um, what the situation <coughs> will be. Um, we did take an asbestos sample on the uh, roof that was in question that we talked about. I'm happy to report that it apparently did not contain asbestos carrying materials, so we are able to um, move along without having to take that into consideration, which is truly a help. The a few small asbestos removal um, uh, considerations, the vinyl asbestos tile, which doesn't look like an asbestos carrying material, but by the upgraded adhere standards is, will require some uh, small abatement procedures. We are already uh, in the process of dealing with a company that will deal with that with us. And while I am on the topic of asbestos, I would like to mention, and I did um, have a conversation um, with one or two of the board members on this, but haven't, this just happened, so I really haven't had a chance to put it into the packet. Uh, I want to call to the community's attention that we occasionally are visited by state teams of asbestos removal people. This is actually a very um, beneficial thing for the state system because these are uh, trained certified state-run groups um, that are attempting to help school districts in removal of some asbestos carrying materials so that we do not have to carry that burden totally ourselves. Those of you who vote, um, I say those of you who vote because there are people in the audience who are not yet of voting age, uh, may recall that for the last two or three years there have been bonds that are intended to cover certain state uh, projects for asbestos removal in the schools, and some of what goes on um, is being paid for through that bond issue. We recently were contacted by one of the state teams at the high school. There are small amounts of covering on pipes that are below the registers, uh, they, you know, in the hallways in the classrooms. Uh, it's not a very large amount, probably, I would guess, maybe six inches, Frank. Uh, and the material, generally speaking, was not friable or was not in any particular danger. However, the state felt that since a, a custodian with a broom or back or whatever material um, instrument they're using might puncture that covering, it is the kind of thing that gets targeted by the state in its asbestos removal program to come in and help us remove. Uh, because there are people in the building, they take extreme caution uh, really uh, perfectly safe procedures. I think maybe some of the students saw this and I'm taking the time tonight to speak about it because it came to my attention that we had not officially informed the public and we, I believe, uh, Frank will be putting a notice in his um, uh, letter to parents explaining this and I wanted to take this opportunity to explain to you people as well as to the audience uh, that these things will happen from time to time and they are safe and they are um, under, you know, complete safety control. If you saw any of the material, to take off this amount of material over pipes, they bring in a plastic tent, which is literally looks like a, a fairly good sized tent, as a matter of fact. It's triple uh, layers of plastic. Um, it is connected to a heap of vac, which uh, creates a suction so that it's negative air in case any filters, uh, any fibers are released. Um, they are then uh, containable. Uh, the men who would go inside that tent wearing white suit materials and so forth, all of this to remove this man material. So I think you can see that uh, caution is being taken. These are procedures that have been worked out so that this kind of work can be done uh, without closing down the institution, without creating any danger at all to anybody in the area. Um, I think it is wise for us to let the community know that these things do go on from time to time. They are under strict supervision. They do not create a safety hazard and, in fact, 
be in some total it will be beneficial all around. If anybody has any questions about that, I would be happy to answer them. Okay. Are you moving on? Well, I was, I was going to ask. We did have some rain last week. Were, were there leaks back at the middle school? Were there any problems? I haven't been informed, but it wouldn't surprise me that there would be some. school was all right. I think we had probably one or two at the middle school. Leaks. Uh, was this the one that's over there by the, the one we had trouble with before over by the gym? We had a number of, of leaks. That was one of them. And we called people over to come in. It was when we had the real driving rain. Hmm. And we did have a number of leaks, um, some of which we've had in the past and we've had before. Um, some of the most recent repair work that we've done over where the roof area where we removed the roof, um, that we do not have a leak there. These were some of our old areas that hit us again with the leakage problem. So. Mm -hmm. Were some of these leaks in windows and walls rather than the uh, roofs? Yes, some of them seem to be more in, the, in wall areas and places where the building joins, mm -hmm. joint areas. So, oh, and, and Maybe I'm mistaken, but I thought as of last summer, all the roof work was done at the middle school, except for what was removed because of, of uh, the problem. Then, then did, did the, the contractors not have any responsibility? No, no, the one one leak that I know she's referring to is a is a wall leak, and we've got the engineers looking at that too. It's it's I don't know if, I think all we need to do is patch it, but they're looking at the, at the structure at the same time. Uh, there's another one that's a on the other side, it's a wall leak or related to the roof, but it's like it's only there when it's windy and rainy. It's like we've tested that as one of those. But you know, we're on top of it. It's just I'm glad to hear that that section didn't leak because we had a few leaks in that section before where we had uh, mm -hmm. you know some problems in the walls and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. The roofers are great. Though. I mean, we we call them and they've been on on. Uh, almost on staff when it rains, you know, to fall this around. They have done a lot of roofs. And, you know, they're, they're up, I mean, they're, they're updating them as they find them. The middle school's problems may be other than roofs, yes. correct? Yes, I, we, when we get down to school space study committee, I think we probably will, I will share some of what I think are some problems there. Uh, again, sort of coming in the middle, uh, when you put a roof on, there is a warranty period. There are certainly, uh, there's a period of time when you certainly have recourse with your roofers as well as the materials themselves. So I would expect that uh, for new work, certainly we, uh, we have a routine that we can follow to get them in and fix it. It's not terribly uncommon with a new roofing project to have some uh, adjustments, I think is <laughs> what they call them. Um, but we certainly want to be informed if they are persistent because they should not, certainly new work, there should not be a problem. Should I move on? Please. Okay. The next two items are actually, um, I'm going to ask uh, Michael Efron to uh, report on the curriculum nights and the African American Studies Project. And I also want to call to your attention that in discussing how to inform the school committee, uh, school board for the uh, kinds of uh, uh, use of release time or use of uh, the afternoon study time for teachers, we've tried to put into your packets a summary of what's going on in each building. I'm not sure if you have got all of those this time because uh, there was some, uh, we had some difficulties getting them in. I think you probably just got the high school one. And um, we have them all. Okay. If you have any questions on those, I know the principals be more than willing to answer. But we thought it might be a more um, expeditious way to get that information to you rather than just giving it to you orally. So, the two school-based curriculum reports tonight are on the curriculum nights themselves and the fourth grade African American Studies project. Actually, you have a, <clears throat> you have an overview of both those things in your packet. I was going to 
really just respond to questions rather than try to represent all the material that you already have. Questions? Any questions with um, regards to the curriculum nights? <clears throat> We're about midway through all the curriculum nights that we've planned. You realize, of course, you're catching us unprepared. We're not ready for this quiz. Uh -huh. <laughs> You've never come up, Michael, and just ask questions. No, this, is a, this is a trick presentation <laughs> if I ever saw one. I was, I was just sitting back waiting. Yeah. <laughs> In that case, I'm going to write all my presentations up. <laughs> <laughs> what, kind of per what kind of participation did you get from, uh, from parents on the curriculum nights that you've had so far? Um, <clears throat> Not counting the last one, which isn't in your packet. They've been running between 20 and 30 parents. Are you pleased with that? <coughs> um, I'm pleased with the number, but, but the 20 and 30 parents are not 20 and 30 different parents. Uh, a lot of those nights have 10, 15 parents who, who, have been, who are sort of regular attenders have been coming to all of them. So I'd have to say that there aren't as many people coming out as I had hoped. I, I'm, I like the number, 2030 is a nice size, but it doesn't represent 20, 30 new people each meeting. It's been more like 10 new people each meeting and a core of about 15 who come to everything that we offer. In the eighth grade language arts curriculum, that block of 70 minutes has now that we've been into it about a, a whole semester, I mean a whole quarter, has there any modifications come about as far as changes in how they're dealing with the time? And how they're dealing with the time? Yeah, I mean. That, that was one of the questions that got asked that night about how the 80 minute, how the time block is going and whether kids were getting enough breaks in the time block. Um, so I'll try to paraphrase as best I can some of the answers. The teachers find that uh, the time is the time block is is wonderful. They're really able to do lots of things. Uh, they're feeling very good about it. Teachers use give the kids breaks in a timely way, depending on the tasks and depending on when one piece of work is over and another piece of work begins. So the t so the breaks when they come um, happen as it has happens as it makes sense okay and so this and that was the that was one of the questions that night is there a set time that the kids have a break and the answer is there isn't a set time because the breaks happen when it makes sense to take a break not not after 40 minutes automatically if kids are in the middle of something the it, it continues until the task ends and the teachers reported that um, the teachers reported that, that they felt the students were doing well with the time block, that it wasn't feeling like an overly long period of time or kids really fading at the end, that they have enough different activities going on in each block, that that's been, uh, that the 80 minutes has not been a problem in terms of being too long. Do you want to? Add anything to that answer? That's and the other thing, of course, we have a new eighth grade math program. How has that been received by the students? Uh, are, are, is there a certain percentage that seem to be having trouble with the program? Or is that overall going well? It's a whole different approach. That's so. I don't, ha I don't have a breakdown on how the, all those eighth grade math classes are. I, I, don't, I don't have a breakdown on exactly how that's going. So does Charlotte feel that, that for a new program <coughs> that it seems to be going well or not? I think it's going well. It, well let me give you roughly my, my sense there, okay? Um, the program I, I believe is going very well. For, God, I'm trying to remember these percentages because Mary and Charlotte and I talked about this at the end of last week. There's roughly, um, 
the, don't hold me to these percentages, something like 10 or 20 percent of the kids for whom the program is really difficult and they're having a tough time with it. Uh, there's the remainder of the kids for whom the program is, is more of a challenge. That's, that was its design, but, but they're doing well. And Charlotte, Mary are, are feeling good at the w in the way it's going. Okay, now those numbers might be a bit off, but it's something like that. And okay, there's I very... <clears throat> and that was true both in the Algebra 1 and in the Transitional Math at, at grade 8. I have an 8th grader who's in that program, and for the first time in 8 years, he seems to like math. Oh. So I, he, he does find that he has to do his homework every night to keep abreast of what's going on. Oh, that's really good feedback. Um, I might say that, uh, you know, all the, f all the feedback that we got when we visited all these other school systems that started the Chicago program was that the program was so different that they uh, told us it was going to take the kids a couple and the teachers a couple of months to adjust to uh, the demands of kids really reading the textbook, really doing that much homework each night, the, the new expectations. Uh, that seems to be true from what, uh, from what Charlotte and Mary said, that, that the students are adjusting to, to doing the reading, to, to doing the work. And, and there, are, there are a group of kids, though, who are really struggling with it. So we're, we're, we're still... Is there any kind of tutorial help for them? Meaning, are those kids coming and asking for help? And I, I think the teachers make themselves available after school. Uh, Mary and uh, Charlotte's half time. How is the high school program going? I'm not sure. I mean, this is a transition. I mean, this is a new program. It would, we've, we've, had a, we've had a quarter of, of it being implemented. It would be nice to know how it's doing. I've been in a number of the uh, ninth grade classrooms, um, so I'll give you my sense, okay? Uh, Don Richards is using the transitional math program with the level three class for algebra, and that's, um, that's a spectacular in how well it's going. Um, Don's really pleased with it. The kids are very on task, uh, uh, working in small groups, going really uh, doing really getting into the problems it's 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 a wonderful dynamic in that room um, the algebra one classes are uh, they're about in chapter three uh, which is which is about where I'd expect them to be and I think that I don't know. I, don't, I haven't asked the teachers to give me an overall. It's premature for me to answer that, Charlie. I really haven't asked all those teachers to give me a report. From what I've seen, different classes are doing differently. I don't know how that looks across all the classes. I do. Yeah. I'd be uncomfortable. I know you're teaching a class. Have, have you found that you've been able to keep up the pace that you originally thought you'd be able to, to move at? I'm doing um, the transitional math program with a, with a heterogeneous group of seventh graders. No, not, <clears throat> I, I, I pictured being pretty close to a lesson a day, uh, which is what, and I knew I needed to modify that. I'm nowhere near that. Is uh, that what the... This, the, the book recommends, I mean, is that the standard set for the program? That's what the book recommends, but the students um, just couldn't handle that pace. So I'm, 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 more, I'm, I'm not near that kind of pace. Why, why would that be so? Do you think the, the, the expectations of the book are, are too great for the, the ability, or is, what, what, do you, what do you, why the disparity? There's, um, it's, it's meant to be, I mean, in the seventh grade, all the sections are heterogeneous, and they really are heterogeneous. There's a tremendous range of 
mathematical background in that class. So there's about a quarter, maybe even a third of the kids in the class who could really do that pace. And the rest of the kids couldn't. Their math, their math backgrounds are just not strong enough. And there's about another quarter of the class uh, whose math backgrounds, uh, I've really been taken aback as to how weak they are. It's been good for me to be get back in the classroom and see that. Um, this kind of goes along with, with what you were just saying. You, you and I had a conversation last week and I think it's important for the community to understand that, that people are in, in the school are aware that it's that the higher level thinking is extremely important but skill work is also important and you don't have one without the other and that the school is addressing both those areas um, I don't know whether you want to comment on that or not but but I know it is of concern to people in the community that some kids are not getting the skill work that, that they need. And, and to follow up on Loretta's question, what can be done in the earlier grades to be sure that the children are ready to keep that pace if that's the desired level you want to accomplish by the time they get to seventh grade? Mm. Yeah, let, let, me, let me restate that. Let's, I'm going to absolutely agree with what you said. Lots of times these standardized tests that <coughs> we report to you, either the uh, main uh, assessment or the SRAs report math results <coughs> as uh, computation, which sort of falls under the skills category, concepts, which sometimes we call understanding, and then problem solving. The Chicago program and the new NCTM standards call for a program that's much more oriented around problem solving and much more oriented around uh, higher levels of thinking. And you can't do either one of those if you don't have skills in place and you don't have understanding in place. It's, it's not like you can focus on one and not do the other. If either one isn't there, you can't solve any interesting problems. Um, so, uh, let me just re-say that again in a different way. If, if I give you an interesting problem, a problem that's uh, somewhat difficult to take some thinking, you might have an understanding about multiplication. You might have some concepts about that, but if you don't have skills, you can't make any progress. So, so the notion of doing this without skills work is, is crazy. You need it. At the same time, if you really have lots of skills but you don't know when to add or when to divide, you also can't solve any interesting problems. So you need the understanding both. So, so really the program that we're trying to move toward, trying to devise, is going to be a program that's strong. You can't do higher level thinking if it isn't strong in all aspects. So we need a program that both um, focuses on concepts and on skills. Uh, and, it, and it needs that balance. One of the interesting things about the Chicago program, the Chicago, it does review in a different way, in a different way than Addison Wesley, which is kind of our old textbook. Uh, but it, it assumes a certain level of mastery of, of skills and doesn't do an awful lot of skills work. Uh, it assumes that that's been done and so I have a whole group of kids in my seventh grade class who don't have skills in place. I, I need to stop and I need to do skills with them because they can't proceed. More and more I need to, I need to s not keep the Chicago pace and do that. So I need to modify as I see the needs of the kids. Um, So yes, the program that we're working toward is a program that'll have both and not one being sacrificed for the other because that makes no sense. Uh, that's the long-term answer, okay, in terms, of, in terms of program development. In the short term, in terms of, if I'm following you, in, in the short term, 
if there are some parents who know that their child's skills are weak and feel that they're not getting enough skills training now, then I would really encourage them to um, be in contact with the teacher, be in contact with, the, uh, with uh, either one of our math resource people in the building or myself, and let's address it right now. We can't, we can't wait for the program to, because in fact we haven't brought in any new programs yet, uh, K through K through seven. I mean that's still all developing. So if so if so if there is a parent out there who feels like their child really needs more skills work than they see getting done right now, I would encourage them to be in touch with the teachers and share that concern and, and we can respond to that without waiting for the entire you know, program to, to come into place. So in well, the short term, let's, let's deal with it. One of the concerns that I hear and I've heard many times, in fact I've mentioned it to you and others many times, is the perceived lack of uh, uniformity or standardization in, the, uh, in math. I hear that about math, I think it's easier for parents to quantify that. Uh, there's a feeling that some classes move more rapidly than others. <coughs> what is your feeling on that? I think it's true. Do I they end up in the same place? Not necessarily. And that's partly because um, That's partly because different classes, the kids have different needs. And well, but that wouldn't be the case yeah. if we had heterogeneously grouped classes, which is what you just described. It would seem no. to me that a, there would be a minimum expectation that at a given grade level, a certain amount of material would be covered. I think there's... You're, you're putting me in a funny place here, because right now, uh, grades three, four, five, six, pretty much have, a, as, its, ha, have as its base uh, the Addison-Wesley program, which is what we're working hard to move away from. But, that's, but we haven't moved away from it yet. It's still the program that we're using. And we know that it's inadequate in a number of ways. And, and I don't mean to pick on that publisher. All the, all the programs uh, in the country really have the same sh uh, problem and that is that they just haven't been presenting enough new material. The math hasn't been challenging enough across the board in, in these grade levels. So we're in the process of trying to uh, rewrite our entire math program. Okay? The program we have in place just doesn't demand enough right now. And, and okay. And well, I think that's another issue, that it doesn't demand enough. The issue that I raised was uh, the perception, uh, which I hear repeatedly, that uh, in different classes, uh, the teaching goes on at different paces. Uh, and that uh, at the end of the year, maybe one class has covered more material than, than another class. And parents feel that, a, that, that their child, if the child is in a class that hasn't covered as much material that they've been disadvantaged or deprived somehow. I think you have a variation on how much teachers um, enrich, enrich the program, develop their own, their own stuff, either based on the training they've done with Rachel McAnellen or based on, on their own mathematics. Uh, other teachers who stay closer to the textbook uh, I'm, I'm hoping that that's going to get worked through as we write these teacher guides together, as the teachers all write the teacher guides together. The kids at the end of the year should come out, okay, having covered a prescribed amount, amount of material. Yeah, I think that's the key point. Uh, there are different teaching styles and uh, I think all of us agree that we, uh, we welcome that and we recognize that. Uh, it's, it's that point, did the material get covered? And I don't know the answer to that, incidentally. I'm merely reflecting what I hear 
uh, as a member of the school board, and I hear it pretty much year in and year out, and uh, you know, periodically I pass it on to uh, to uh, to you. Yeah. And, Sorry, and we have several questions. Go ahead. Laura. And I'm all, and I'm already hearing it about the new program, which is it's designed to cover a lesson a day, and a lesson a day can't be covered because the general ability in the classroom won't warrant it. And so you're taking a third of your students who can cover a lesson a day, and what are they doing? I'm, I am asking that question. Are, are you individualizing enough that that third is being, you're saying there's a lack of challenge, and, and I'm not sure that the new program is, is addressing that if in fact, you, it's necessary to slow down the pace that's recommended. Uh, so I, I'm, not, I'm not understanding how we're solving the problem. I, I know it's early in the program, but I'm still not understanding how we're, we're beginning to solve the problem if in fact we're not doing the basic amount. I guess I'm asking, is mathematics a subject that can be taught heterogeneously? That's my question. Are you nodding because you understood the question or because you? It's a question very much on my mind too, mm -hmm. very much. And, and the concerns you're raising are concerns that, uh, that, uh, that I share. Certainly when we uh, looked at the, the, uh, the challenge program, one of the things that we talked about a lot was that in certain strands, uh, you can, and the research supports, very spe specified pull-out programs, mm -hmm. which I guess goes against heterogeneous grouping. Right. Is this what you're experiencing in the classroom? I mean, are you, is your experience supporting that thesis? It's, I'm, I'm not ready to make a final recommendation, but, but I, uh, about that. But I gotta tell you, I think the absolute most difficult task a teacher faces in a classroom is the spread of abilities of those students. Mm -hmm. Far and away the toughest, the, the toughest teaching issue that a teacher has is that issue. Mm -hmm. Jan, you had a question? Just a comment. One of the things, uh, I, I want to comment on, on what you said a few minutes ago. I, I think that there are parents in the community that would hope that rather than having to come forward themselves and saying my child isn't getting enough skill work, that that the teachers might recognize that and and adjust it within the classroom and report to the parents rather than the other way around. And and, and I understand, you know, what you're saying, but but I think parents sometimes get tired of having the burden placed on them to to say my child needs this or that or and really want the school to to address it well I, I'd like to think of it as as kind of a partnership and and not you know one side sitting back saying well I'm not hearing from the other side then they're not doing it or things are fine it's that, that's I, true, I think at the I point think the point when either the teacher or the parent gets concerned about something is the time to communicate. I think and some people feel that they have tried to communicate and, <coughs> it's, and it's not been addressed. And, and they don't know where else to go to communicate it. That, that they have said it and, and they don't see anything changing and, and so they throw up their hands and say, you know, so what do I do now? Well, let's see, the frustration I have is if if we have if we have this discussion here at a school board meeting the discussion is going to be very general it's not going to get any help to that specific student and that specific parent the only discussion we can have is a very general one I could tell you about our plans for program development I can tell you about our staff training coming up next summer I could tell you the kind of things that come up in math committee meetings all of which stay at a pretty general level so the way to zero in and get help to that student is for uh, the parent and the teacher to get together and, and focus in on that because at, at this level we're only going to have general discussions. And I think that's true with probably a fourth of the parents out there. They should, they would, they could come and talk to you or talk to the teacher. There's a lot of parents out there that don't feel qualified. They don't know 
I mean, they have turned the education over to, to the system, and they, they don't feel that they know enough to know if their child's getting what they need or not until they reach a, their junior level in high school and they take a test and, and they say, you know, you're way below the national standards on your math SAT. And they, they think, well, that's the first time I've ever heard of that. I just don't think most parents consider themselves educational experts. And I think it's, and, and probably many of those children would, would profit from that. But I just, I think it's, it's unrealistic to expect that, that the parents are going to discern that the skills are lacking and the, uh, you know, the, the repetition that you get from adding and subtracting and things like that are, are missing for their child. I think this, they're expecting the school to tell them that. And I think that happens a lot. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's not underestimate how much communication does happen. Um, you know, we have uh, parent conferences scheduled regularly with all, with all parents for all kids um, right through eighth grade um, twice a year. The twice a year, right through eighth grade, which, where we try to do 100% coverage in this communication, which is an enormous effort. Uh, and, and there's lots of communication that's going on there. And so, and so I, there's probably an awful lot of that happening. So let's, let's not lose sight of that in the, in, the, in the places where we feel like there isn't enough communication. But I don't, I don't mean to dismiss those cases either. But just generally, if we think we have, that our math standards are not up to par, and I don't know that we think that, but I think that, just I personally, think that I think too. that we, it, I think that the, uh, the ability of our students is, is not being challenged to their utmost in mathematics. Uh, so somewhere there's a breakdown. It's, it's either in those conferences or it's in the quality of teaching or it's in the textbook that's being used or and, and I guess this is a good time to mention what I asked Mr. Miles for last month which was a breakdown of why the eighth grade girls or what the eighth grade girls and the eleventh or what the eleventh grade girls did in math when they were eighth graders and they scored a hundred and three points higher as eighth graders than they did at 11th, as eleventh graders the same group of girls so things are happening that that we don't seem to understand and, and I, I want us to begin to try to understand that. And I, and I think we're working toward that, but I think we have a long way to go. And I guess we're hoping that we will jumpstart this and get good answers quickly. And it just seems to be going on for a long time. I, I think part of the, the problem also is that we're in a state of transition. <coughs> where some teachers are moving away from Addison Wesley much faster than others, um, and so I don't think parents understand where we are in math or, or, or where we're heading, and if we're moving away from the text and using mostly mani manipulatives, where the skill work is coming in, and, and I, I truly think that there is more communication that needs to, to happen, or changes in the program. Well, we are, we are in a transitional phase, and we really are, but the program is still basically Addison Wesley. Until we write these teacher guides through our summer work, uh, we'll stay with that, and until those teacher guides are done, which will, which will sequence the programs and balance these things out, that, that, that will be our program. What's the timetable on that? I mean, I, I guess the frustrating thing after being on the board for two and a half years and having followed it for a year prior to that is that in the, in the world of education, it seems to take forever to get anything accomplished. Uh, in, the, in the world outside of education, you, go, you set a goal, you go out and achieve that goal, and you work your damnedest to do that as soon as possible. And I guess I'm sitting here not following the program as closely as you are. <coughs> um, frustrated from my own standpoint that it's taken this long. We're talking about a summer program next year to work on the curriculum, which means that if it doesn't get done next year, there's another two years down the road of kids in the program where it's not working. Um, we've got a, you're, you're back in the classroom for the first time in a couple of years, and 
I would say very surprised at the level uh, of skill, the skill level of the seventh graders that you have. Um, if you're surprised, I got to tell you, there's a lot of people out there tonight that are surprised, and I'm real surprised sitting here. Because looking at it from my perspective for the last three or four years, we've had, uh, we've had Rachel in here, we've been talking about manipulatives, we've had programs with parents, we've, we've had you know, hundreds of parents show up for these programs. I got the feeling the math program, you know, Loretta has different opinions. My feeling is maybe the math programs were making great strides in that. Now you're talking about a seventh grade class that has been part of these, the manipulative programs that have been in the schools for the last three years. And now we're saying it's going to be another year or two before we, we straighten out the program. So we've had five or six years of kids in a transitional program, um, and we're still not sure what that program is going to be. And I find that real frustrating. I don't mean to take it out on you, but you happen to be standing there at the microphone, so you're going to hear it. It really bothers me. And if it bothers me, and I'm looking at these things day in and day out as an elected official on this board, it sure as hell should bother some parents out there. If I might make a, a comment, because I, uh, this is my second board meeting, but uh, I certainly am aware of the difficulties that uh, the schools in general are facing with a time of really trying to accomplish a lot of things at once. Among other things, we're talking here about improving the caliber of a math program, and um, although I'm not at this point really familiar yet with the Chicago program, I have a generalized sense of it, but I certainly don't know the specifics. Um, and I certainly think that what you have been uh, getting in the system is a lot of work, and you, to be honest with you, looking at your MEA scores, they're certainly not bad. Um, and knowing, again, I know it's not really helpful for you to uh, take a statewide perspective and say, well, we're certainly better than such and such and so and so. But um, we're reaching a phase where the kinds of math programs that we've been concerned about in the past have been uh, selectively more difficult. And if you didn't make them too bad, uh, we didn't have the expectation that all high school graduates should take algebra. It simply wasn't expected. Uh, it may have been the expectation of a lot of parents, but as far as the general school programs, those kinds of things were not. Uh, it was an elective, and you could take it or not. You could pass it or not. We're reaching a point now where I think very quickly we are going to be expecting, certainly in this community, everybody to take and pass algebra, everybody to take and pass geometry, everybody to take and pass uh, a bunch of other ways of looking at mathematics and so on. Um, and certainly it is frustrating. I hear your frustration and I, I would have to say oftentimes I've shared it, but uh, in all honesty, I think that the work that's going on here is at least moving in the right direction. Small comfort. One other great issue is this whole business of homogeneous and heterogeneous grouping, and that's, that argument's been going on a long time, and if you've been following some of the arguments in the national press were being told that, uh, I think it was the National Governors Commission came out with a statement this summer, the tracking was bad and that we should get rid of it and so forth. Um, you know, just fine, let's just wipe the slate clean. Well, we've been through several attempts at doing that also with some of the same frustrations that are surfacing in the discussion this evening. Um, I think that identifying the problems, I think I hear a need to come back to you uh, at some point in the foreseeable future with this kind of discussion in mind and uh, I hear several points one being that urging parents and this is an ideal time to to ask the administrators to pass them along to, to teachers we're about to go into a round of parent conferences uh, and hopefully any parent watching this or any teacher uh, being aware of this discussion uh, let's have a little conversation about where do you think math is what kind of feedback are you getting and see what pops out of those one-on-one -on -one conferences, and Michael certainly would be in a position to be talking to the teachers about that. Let's see what kind of feedback we can get. I think that's important. Um, the other thing is we're, we're also trying to look at curriculum from the standpoint of outcomes, uh, which is much easier said than done. Um, ideally, at some point down the road, there would be a point where uh, the school curriculum would actually be based on a sort of set of global standards, somewhat like the math standards are, are certainly trying to. Uh, suggest, um, and you would look at youngsters, every youngster at certain points, probably in two or three grade blocks, and uh, 
could be a little more sensitive about, is everybody doing this? They aren't all going to do it at the same time. Uh, there is plenty of evidence that some kids should not really be expected uh, to be totally successful in algebra until their second or third year in high school rather than the eighth or ninth grade. Those are the kinds of things that the timetable is different for different kids and that, that's a hard thing to factor in there too. Having said as much, I don't even, I don't know the specifics here. I know what they are in other settings um, and I just wanted to try to put some, it's an endless topic. <laughs> Hopefully a little closure and we'll see what we can do. Charlie? I just want to make a, ask a question on Peter's comment about variability in teaching styles and children coming to the same place at the end of the year. Then what role is the math coordinator in helping to facilitate this? Is that one of his roles? To help those teachers or to keep a handle on where different yeah. classes are? Yeah. The, the game plan that, we've, that we have you know, is that we do our program development in the summer. During the academic year, our attention becomes focused on delivering the program in place as well as possible. Okay? That's, that's the focus for the curriculum resource people in the building. It's my focus also. So our focus becomes uh, working with teachers, helping uh, deliver supplementary material to uh, extend kids who are being identified as needing more, uh, helping uh, do more skills work with kids who are identifying, identified as needing more of that, uh, helping work with, with teachers on the pace that they're setting and the problems that are coming up. The focus becomes the implementation of the present program. That's, that's what they're doing, that's what I'm doing. Okay? So right now we're not worrying, we're not working on the further development of the program. The focus now is doing the best we can with the program we're delivering. So that means working with teachers, helping them, helping them as much as we can, being a resource for them uh, with the issues that are coming up in their classrooms. Could he also very much? Could he aid as a tutorial if needed, or is there not enough time for those kids that don't seem to have the skills by the seventh grade? We are. Uh, I guess are, what I'm trying to understand there's, there's is what the role of that of that those coordinators in the school are is. I know they are half time and and in Charlotte's case, it's a quarter, quarter of the ten time, hours. Yeah, you know, there's not a lot of time those folks have to start doing separate tutorials. They're trying to get into a lot of classrooms and back up a lot of teachers and be effective that way. They're developing a lot of extra materials for teachers each week. So they're more of a resource than a, than a, than a troubleshooter. They, they do some of that, but, but there's not a lot of time available to, that's, that's not a major access to tutorial work for all the kids. Shall we move on? We have a fairly long agenda with uh, quite a few more reports to go. But, um, uh, you're uh, with the gavel. Okay, then I think, thank you, Michael, and uh, you certainly answered a lot more than what was on the, on the list, but I think it's uh, an opportunity to surface what your concerns are, and we will try to respond. So that's okay, fine. Thank you, Michael. <coughs> We're back to you, Pete. I just want to make a general comment. It just seemed nice for, for a change to talk about curriculum and ask some questions because our focus the last three months has been on other things and it just seemed nice to have that little bit of a respite, a reprieve or whatever you want to call it. I didn't mean to put Michael on the hot seat or I think any of us, but it just to focus somewhere else besides facilities. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Okay. The board chairman's report is uh, basically a report by practically everybody but the uh, board chairman. Me? Are we? We skipped one. Well, I thought you that scratched was that. Too. That was Michael's. I'm too. sorry. 
Oh, that, that was Michael too. But what? What? Oh, what I'm sorry. What he had, in fact, uh, Michael, I, I think you felt that you had given some material in advance, and if people had questions, they could ask. Or did, was there some other comment that you wanted to make on that? Whoops. I'm sorry, Michael. When uh, when Connie said handed it back to me, I thought that item was being dropped. No, I didn't realize it was. Uh, anyway, you've got another half an hour. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> Well, geez, do you have any question about the Afro-American <laughs> unit <laughs> for the fourth grade? I think it sounds exciting. It'll be fun to see all that take place. You the two classes that do go to Boston, everything else will be for all the fourth grade. That's, that's the one little that's right. small. And those were the two t teachers that had, had the grant in place. That's so. right. That's right, and that's, I'm glad you picked that up because an awful lot of this programming is going is, is directed at all the fourth grades. That's nice. Right, it's not like only two of the, f of the eight are, are getting this. All eight are going to be part of this program. And one of the reasons I gave you an update now is because uh, we're, we are right now at the point where we've scheduled uh, meetings with the two Cambridge teachers. We're going to be getting together with them in December. And it's at that meeting with the Cambridge teachers that we're really going to want to make some commitments to really doing some of this. So I thought this was a good time to bring you as up to date as we can before we actually start committing ourselves to, to these Cambridge folk. Okay. Questions? That was it? You've got 28 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for the banker. Okay. <laughs> Connie, one of the things that uh, we've done um, is uh, when you, when you uh, are giving your report, then you have the gavel. Oh, okay. Uh, you but, you uh, told me that last month and I forgot. Yeah, okay. So uh, I thought you were dropping that one out for whatever reason. but. Uh, I actually can think of one thing that you might uh, give us a, uh, a briefing on to the extent that it's possible, and that's uh, going back to the, uh, the roofs. Uh, I understand we had uh, initiated settlement talks, mm. and uh, to the extent possible, could you comment on that and uh, just say a few words about that process? Yes. Um the, all I can really say at this point is that those talks have started. They will be ongoing, and um, frankly, because they are the kinds of things that are um, confidential information while they're ongoing, obviously, I really can't say anything more except that uh, we are doing them. Uh, I feel sort of tongue-tied. Well, I think it's an attempt to uh, avoid litigation, which yes. is in the interest of uh, all sides. and. Uh, uh, those talks are going on. I think it's important that the public know that, yes. that there is, there is movement on that front and there uh, conceivably could be some news uh, sometime. Yes. Charlie. In considering the budget last year, I believe that we cut our legal fees. Is there going to be a time that we may have to go back and look at that? Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. It's, uh, the legal fees are... Uh, uh, a good example of how the budget process is a dynamic process. Uh, the oil price increase is another example. Uh, I mean, I think we've, we've uh, there's been a lot of publicity of the many examples. Uh, the hiring of new teachers at a lower than uh, projected cost worked in our benefit. Uh, the roof problem, the legal problems, or the legal costs, uh, uh, the oil price all worked against us right now is uh, you know, you can tell from the uh, deeds report, we're, we're watching it very closely, uh, looking at these items on a very regular basis, uh, because uh, this is, there's no doubt that this is going to be a very tight year. Uh, and I have no doubt whatsoever, to answer your specific question, that legal costs will probably be in the vicinity of double what we budgeted. And that's a wild guess, but it, it's going to be, uh, we're going to be way off on that one. Okay, any time that we go over budget on a particular account, is it my understanding that the business manager will come to the board 
and ask for additional funds or to transfer additional funds that this will not be done as a as a um, office transaction no that's going to be brought to the board's attention on a regular basis okay. you know, any definitely. account transfer that's not yeah I mean within reason no, and I, I don't think we've established that right down to you know every fifty dollars no 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 I'm but talking about a general large overrun on you know. a particular yeah you know, we've been working quite hard in the last few weeks on this new program which will allow us much greater flexibility than the Cato system so that we can look at uh, the budget accounts uh, in, in a much more precise manner and I think probably at the next meeting we'll have a substantial uh, list of items to share with you Okay, um, the board chairman's report is actually a report by uh, uh, Charlie Greer and Jan Soland. Uh, it's a testimony to uh, not only their enthusiasm, but my ability to delegate matters. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Charlie, you're up next with a career ladder study report. Since our last school board meeting in October, the Career Ladder Study Committee has met twice on October 17th and November 7th. Um, as a result of those two meetings, a consensus has come out of that study committee to look at one pay scale. Um, there will be another meeting on Tuesday, November 27 at 3.30 p.m. And at that time, all members of the committee are to come with a list of things that are either in the existing career ladder or other factors that would go into one pay scale. There were four areas that in the last two meetings that had come to light as a consensus. One was that the career ladder philosophy stay in place. Two, that support teams were a very important element of whether it was a, um, a career ladder or a index system. Uh, a unifi uniform, unified performance evaluation for the whole system as a whole and staff development. Those are four areas that the committee had come to some consensus. So they are aware of the time frame of negotiations which will be starting up and to come back to the board and the different um, bargaining units with some suggestions. Questions? I might just add to that. Um, this is a, a consensus to look at a proposal, not that some, and I think that was clear from what you said, but I just wanted to, to make that clear. It, it, I'm finding as a person new to this situation, um, frankly, it is a difficult situation. It is loaded with all kinds of um, factual as well as budgetary implications as well as a lot of emotional investment uh, and it's uh, going to be a difficult issue uh, to look at uh, in light of the general uh, I, guess I was going to use the word charge but I don't think there is a written charge for this particular study committee that's another one of the problems with the study committee it's a little unclear exactly what its status is and how it's supposed to relate and um, we'll probably find that uh, when we really get down to the nitty-gritty, we've sort of been going around the edges on some of the philosophy and general pros and cons of various things. Uh, I would anticipate uh, some difficult times. But I think there's finally a focus. Yes, I, mean, I, I had that feeling too. Thank you. Jan, the uh, report on the superintendent search. Yes, thank you. Um, after consulting with Maine School Management and other school boards who have just been through a search for their superintendent, we have decided upon the following process. Um, first, uh, I'd like everybody to know that our ads have all been placed in newspapers and professional journals, and we are now mail mailing application packets to interested candidates. Um, next, we want to gather input from the school staff and the community on the qualifications they feel a superintendent should possess. So in order to accomplish this, we've scheduled a series of meetings. The first two meetings will be with teachers, aides, assistants, secretaries, bus drivers, food service people, janitors, etc., um, to gather their 
um, input, and these will be held on Monday, November 26th at 3.30 in the high school library, and Wednesday, November 28th at 4.30 in the Pond Cove cafeteria. The next meeting will be on Friday, November 30th with the Administrative Council. On Tuesday, December 4th, we will hold a public meeting here at Town Hall, and everybody in the community is invited to attend. The board will then meet on Monday, December 10th at 7 p.m. in the superintendent's boardroom to compile all of the information and develop the final list of criteria. When all of the applications have been received, and the, and the closing date is December 20th, the school board will go through the applications and select approximately 10 to 12 candidates. Uh, during parts of the process, we will be using Dorothy Moore, who is a Dean of Education at the University of Southern Maine, on an hourly consulting basis to give us professional advice as needed. The candidates will come to the CAPE and be interviewed by the school board, the three principals, and Sam Boothby as a teacher representative. The field will then be narrowed to three to five candidates, and at that time, on-site visits may be planned by some board members. These candidates will then each come to the Cape for approximately one and a half days. And during their time here, they'll tour the schools, meet with principals, teachers, support staff, parents, groups, et cetera, to answer questions and to get acquainted. And these groups will then give their feedback to the board. The board will then interview the finalists and make a decision. And the timeline for all of this is to do initial screening interviews in February, possible on-site visits in March, and final interview and selection in April. Thank you, Jen. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Charlie. The School Space uh, Study Committee. I think I will, uh, since Connie has written out something, I think I will let her go first. <laughs> well. Okay. Actually, I haven't <coughs> written it out in any great detail, but anything that I leave out, be sure you... I will do. Uh, we met with the town council um, group. Uh, I guess it's a town council slash school board group, uh, sort of a town group for school space committee. I did uh, read background material that I could find on the studies that you had done recently, the NESDEC study, some... Uh, materials they found in the files that the principals, building principals and teachers had submitted. Uh, and I noticed in the material that was sent out with the notice of the meeting that the focus was on enrollment. That is how many students there were and where would we put them and by what grade configuration. And clearly the NESDEC study had gone um, into that in great length. That is should other uses of the high school for other grades and so on and so forth. Um, however, after surveying the buildings myself, going through all of them, um, all three, <laughs> but they seem longer, you know, those long uh, railroad car kind of buildings make it seem like more than one. Um, I had some, had some concerns about some of the structural issues. Uh, perhaps my attention was heightened by some of the roof issues particularly the middle school. And so I brought to that meeting um, my concerns. And my recommendation essentially is that this committee consider doing a study that would be probably orchestrated through an engineering architectural firm that would be interviewed and chosen with a specific charge of the scope of work, what people want. Um, and I have, I did ask, um, a school business facility, a school facilities manager that I have worked with in the past to come over and walk through the buildings with me and uh, with uh, with our people uh, to point out some of the problems that you may be facing. There are some indications that, particularly at the middle school, you're dealing with some old, tired buildings, uh, buildings that have some cumulative problems, such as uh, with the uh, original 30s building, brick facing, lifting from the wall, water leaks in back of them, a lot of window problems, um, some cracks in the foundation. Uh, none of these things, as you walk by and look at them, appear to be unsafe or alarming in and of themselves. But what they do tell anybody who is aware of buildings, 
uh, that before you go ahead and make some modifications to where you're going to put students, you really need to have updated information about mechanical systems, electrical systems, and structural systems. It did not seem that that study had been done as part of your previous analysis of the buildings, and so I felt that that was really a critical first step, and I've made that recommendation at our meeting. As a result, the School Study Space Committee is meeting, um, let's see, I guess it's this Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, the, the 17th, 17th. Uh, weather permitting. Let's hope we don't have A, a blizzard, or B, you know, a monsoon, uh, and that we can walk around the building um, and with uh, staff and uh, uh, Charlie, who has been really responsible for these buildings, and take a look outside and inside of what the facilities actually look at and call people's attention to that. I also want to uh, emphasize that our custodial people, particularly Charlie Freeman at the middle school in the Pond Cove and uh, Gary Spencer at the high school, uh, I, in no way do I want to even vaguely intimate that they're letting things slide. They have done a remarkable job of maintaining the buildings, keeping them up, but we're talking about a uh, sort of a stage in the life cycle of any building when you have to stop and look at it. Some of these buildings, uh, well, the original 30s building, obviously, is getting close to 60 years old. Um, and uh, as you get a little closer to 60, you have to take some inventory of, of uh, all your systems. And buildings are no different from people. Uh, as a matter of fact, we also have buildings that are 40 and 50 years old. Um, the fact that the roofs wear out, which is predictable, boilers wear out, electrical systems, mechanical systems, and various settling problems uh, in the foundation of buildings, uh, and the, uh, you have a lot, of, a lot of the complex, really, uh, particularly over at the middle school, those window wall systems tend to wear out their single pane windows and so on. All of those issues do need to be looked at. Um, it's not to say that we can't think about space issues and where we put kids and so on, but until you know how much it's going to cost to bring some of those buildings up to uh, modern code, I think, you know, that's information that precedes any other decision. So it was an organizational meeting and it essentially was to for the whole committee to get a feel for the schools and where the possible problems might be, then go come back and discuss these after two walkthroughs, one through Pond Cove and Middle School and then eventually one through the high school. And the committee will be meeting again on the 26th as a committee of the whole. And a question was raised of possibly uh, undertaking some kind of an architectural um, architectural uh, analysis, analysis of the buildings and if, if it entailed doing that that we would go back to the town council for funding I think that's a very good place to go <laughs> <laughs> who, who is on the committee the complete committee do you can you recall that I, I just thought the public might enjoy knowing so that they would be able to to make contact with with someone that they I am on the spot okay well that's fine but Jeff White is the, is Jeff White the, is, is, the committee, the is the committee chairman. Um, Mr. Pearson is the representative from right. the town council. I'm the representative from the school board. Joyce, um, Freeman. Joyce Freeman, Nancy Ed Singer, um, Ed Capano, and we have a lady right down here. I can't remember her name. Elliot Chapman. <laughs> My apologies. That is our committee. All right. Thank you. Michael McGovern was also there that evening. And Phyllis Cox. And Phyllis Cox. Okay. Thank you, Connie and Charlie. Charlie, the Maine School Board Association Conference. On Thursday, October 25th, I attended the Maine School Board Association Fall Conference um, as your delegate to the assembly. And I also attended three clinics. They have numerous clinics that they hold all day. I attended three. I attended one called Managing Conflict, which I thought was quite appropriate considering what we had been through. And it was a motivational consultant from Montana who also happened to be the keynote speaker for the lunch. And she was very dynamic. And she talked at the keynote address on what is good in American education. And it was very positive. Um, I attended one on Health Education. Are your schools on the cutting edge? And um, 
I found that to be very informative. Um, there were s uh, state education coordinators and consultants from the, the state department there who, who led that, that panel. And I also attended one on superintendent evaluation and goal setting. And I have some, some recommendations and suggestions that came out of that for when we are at that point again of evaluating a superintendent. Um, in the afternoon, I attended the MSBA delegate assembly. They considered 16 resolutions. They passed 14, tabled one, and uh, defeated one. And the one they defeated, I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, it had to do with educational program and really um, relative to dropouts and truancy. And the resolution read, the Maine School Boards Association also supports innovative programs and laws that would pr provide disincentives for students who are considering dropping out of school, such as making the holding of a Maine driver's license for minors contingent upon their remaining in school. And it was overwhelmingly defeated because they felt that education should offer incentives and look for ways of keeping children in school versus dissentive or disincentive type programs. Mm -hmm. I did enjoy the day. Thank you, Charlie. I have just one uh, additional matter to, uh, to discuss with you. When uh, we started this year, John and Loretta were going to be on the uh, negotiating team, and I uh, was going to spend most of my time on the budget, particularly uh, in uh, helping direct the creation of this model uh, for our computers. And I thought I would also work on our on our program, which would be an integral part of the uh, the budget. After talking with Loretta, we have uh, we would like to ask your permission to switch places, and I would go back on the negotiating team, and she would work with Connie on uh, on our program and how that affects uh, our budget. So, uh, does anybody have any objection to our making that change? Thank you. <laughs> Do we need to vote on that? I don't know, Charlie. <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> I count on you for this. <laughs> These are assignments that we initially vote for. I think they are, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion uh, along those lines. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Those assignments are, reassignments are official. There is no unfinished business to my knowledge. Is there any, uh, anybody that uh, has any unfinished business? None. Then uh, new business. Uh, Connie, I'll uh, uh, turn it back to you. Right. And I included uh, some information on this in your board packet. Um, essentially, I'd like to start with the uh, request for uh, a reduced assignment. You have a letter in your packet from uh, Alan Brunel. Um, and it is really in two pieces, and uh, one piece I'll take up in the next item here. But the first one, um, she is making a change in her career plans, and that she would uh, is requesting a reduced assignment, that is, to go from full-time to half-time beginning uh, immediately after Christmas. Um, I certainly recommend, and in your packet, explain that we have discussed this over, um, administratively in-house. We feel that uh, we have both probably some possibilities from posting in-house, but also would be advertising uh, to make sure that we have uh, covered all our bases. And uh, at this time of year, sometimes, especially in special education, we start looking at our needs and uh, reassigning staff people in a variety of ways and cannot predict exactly how this would go. But we're comfortable that this is something that we can do. We would like to recommend to honor um, Ellen's uh, request for reduced assignment. And if you want, I'll continue th down through this list and then you can go back and, and take a vote on this unless you have questions on that. Okay. Since we had reduced some special education staff last year, what in, would she go on part-time before someone is in place or? Uh, well, obviously, she has uh, she has a commitment. She feels that she has a commitment that she's already made, and um, rather than simply leave the system at the half year, uh, she wanted to 
to fulfill her commitment in the program that she was working on at the high school. I think, if I understand correctly, she really just started shepherding a new program or a new approach, not so much uh, a separate program. Uh, and she feels a commitment to staying with that um, and uh, believes that by the half time she can make sure that her input is sufficient. However, we want to point out that what we're really saying is that we uh, clearly, if a staff contract is reduced to half time, that leaves us the other half to go out and hire somebody to cover that, possibly at a reduced rate if it's not somebody um, as she is at the top of the scale. But um, it gives us some flexibility. Um, to hire somebody to help us cover whatever. There's kind of a domino effect when somebody does this kind of thing and exactly what the solution would be, I'm not sure we're prepared to say, but we're certainly looking at it and we're comfortable that we have, this will give us plenty of room to keep the program going and find a you know, fully qualified person and so forth. I just want to make sure that the person's in place, that these children are not disserviced because there's no one there. I think that we have enough notice, so this should not be a problem. Um, obviously, uh, there is the possibility when someone may, is planning a career change, and it's obviously it will be noting as a separate fake, uh, piece in the next uh, item of business. Uh, Ellen is also telling us that she is retiring from the system. Um, her choice was to retire in half a year or and make a career change or to maintain you know, her commitment to the program uh, at a part-time basis and continue to the end of the year. And I think that there's no, certainly I believe that this is something we can do, um, maintaining our commitment to the program as well as facilitating this teacher's career, please. Any other questions? Okay, moving on then, uh, we, uh, as part of Ellen's letter and also three other letters, we have uh, teachers, retiring or indicating <coughs> to us that they will be retiring from the system at the end of the current school year. Ellen Brunell, high school special education teacher, 20 years with the system, actually um, in, in some uh, part-time capacity. She's been with the system more than 20 years. William Bruns, high school math teacher, 29 years with the system. Julie Gardner, third grade teacher, 31 years with the system and Hal Hackett, high school science teacher, 13 years with the system. As I pointed out to you in, in the packet, that's really a rich uh, array of dedication to the children of Cape Elizabeth. Um, we will obviously have other opportunities to thank them and congratulate them for uh, what they have done over the years, but we we'll take this opportunity to point out that um, I'm sure that you would join me in saying thanks. Um, and the, uh, the last item under personnel, uh, have received a letter of resignation from Caress Pecor, who did start teaching with us in Spanish this year and for personal reasons is feeling that she cannot finish the year. I also, I think, I'm um, not sure if I put it in your packet, but I did in fact discuss with some of you, um, we have, in fact, I think beginning today, placed a substitute in that classroom. It is one that we have had a, um, some occasion to observe. She has already been substituting for us in other classes, has been doing a good job. We recognize everybody's concern for keeping those classes going uh, with minimal interruption. We feel that that will be a satisfactory situation, but we're also advertising and uh, we'll be looking for the best possible candidate uh, to um, finish out the year. So those are my personal issues. Okay, I entertain a motion that uh, those three categories with their various uh, re requests for reduced assignment, retirements, or resignation be uh, uh, accepted, approved. So moved. It's been moved. We're voting all three. Is that all right uh, to vote Can all three? Do we? You want to go down individually? Well, I've, I have a little question with, with Ellen in as much as if we don't find a replacement then she's we're not accepting the situation I guess I don't know if we want if we how do we put to rate phrase that differently in the vote well your your situation is this should <coughs> Ellen wish to retire at the half year there is no way you can force her to Sorry. stay 
So what she is obviously coming forth with here is a fact that she had intended to retire at the end of the year. Uh, she will be continuing uh, on a personal level some of her commitment to education. Um, and uh, her career plans are, are offering her an opportunity to start that in sooner than later. In other words, that she's been asked to pick up a responsibility beginning in January. Um, so that it would seem to me that the prudent thing for you to do at this point is to reduce your contract uh, if you wish to, uh, um, you know, state specifically contingent on finding a suitable qualified uh, substitute. Uh, you certainly may do that. I have to point out that should she decide that her career plan is to leave in January, she would simply give us a letter of resignation and she would be leaving. I think by trying to arrange this, she's obviously been trying to give us prior notice, to give us time to arrange this in a timely fashion. Um, and I think that, as I said earlier, we can do that. Um, okay. okay, it's been moved, but not seconded. I second the motion. Uh, second the motion that we do all three categories simultaneously. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's fairly early. <laughs> so sort of a new record. Uh, is there any other business to come before the meeting? Is there any public comment? <coughs> uh, I think we covered uh, the first one, the December 4th. I'll just announce these meeting dates that are on our agenda. Uh, December 4th, uh, which I think Jan mentioned earlier, uh, seeking input from the public on the uh, superintendent search. And the next school board meeting will be on Tuesday, December 11th, uh, here in the council chambers. Entertain a motion, we adjourn. It's been moved. Second. Second it. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Meeting is adjourned. It's in the papers, they all know. The suspension, the fine, I should have known better.